Good morning and peace be with you. Good to see y'all. Have you noticed where we start on page 78 every time? We're starting there today. So there on page 78. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Inventory and Psalter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Venite. Well, let's do the Jubilate today. The Jubilate. There on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let's go to the psalm now. The psalm is Psalm 33, page 626, Psalm 33, page 626. Psalm 33, page 626. Together, please. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with a harp. Pray, play to him upon the psaltery and lyre. Sing for him a new song. Sound a fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the breath of his mouth all the heavenly hosts. He gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. He spoke and it came to pass. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. He thwarts the design of the peoples. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people of the earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's begin again there. Verse 15. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. 
Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have put our trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So our first lesson was taken again from the book of Numbers 20, 14 to 29. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel, you know all the adversity that has befallen us, how our ancestors went down to Egypt and we lived in Egypt for a long time and the Egyptians oppressed us and our ancestors. And when we cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. And here we are in Kadesh, in a town on the edge of your territory. Now let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or vineyard or drink water or from any well. Uh, we will go along the king's highway, not turning aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. But Eden said to him, You shall not pass through or we will come with you, come out with the sword against you. The Israelites said to him, We shall stay on the highway, and if we drink your water, uh, we and our livestock, then we will pay for it. It is only a small matter. Just let us pass through on foot. But he said, You shall not pass through. And Edom came out against them with a large force, heavenly armed. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through their territory, so Israel turned away from them. They set out from Kadesh, and the Israelites and the whole congregation came to Mount Hor. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor, On the border of the land of Edom, let Aaron be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land I have given to the Israelites, because you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and his son Eleazar and bring them up Mount Hor. Strip Aaron of his vestments and put them on his son Eleazar. But Aaron shall be gathered to his people and he shall die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded. He went up Mount Hor in the sight of the whole congregation. Moses stripped Aaron of his vestments and put them on his son Eleazar. And Aaron died there, on the top of the mountain. Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. When all the congregation saw that Aaron had died, all the house of Israel mourned for Aaron thirty days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our first canticle Back up one more. Our first canticle is canticle number one. We have to back up to the left to page 47. Canticle number one, page 47. Are you finding it? Canticle number one, page 47. Let's begin. O oh, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye heavens, bless the Lord. O oh, ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. O oh, all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless you the Lord. O ye stars of heaven, bless you the Lord. O ye showers and dew, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless you the Lord. O ye fire and heat, bless you the Lord. O ye winter and summer, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frost, bless you the Lord. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. 
O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. O ye mountains and hills, bless the Lord. All, o all green, ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye people of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Let us bless the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and magnify him forever. The next lesson is Romans 6, 1 to 11. Good, complex, Pauline sentences. Pay attention closely, class. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we all have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever, whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. When they had come near Jerusalem, oops, excuse me, that's the next one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's turn to Canticle 19 on page 94. Canticle 19, page 94. The Song of the Redeemed. There on page 94. Canticle 19. O oh, the ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are way of righteousness and truth, O oh, king of all the ages. Who can fail to do homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All the nations will draw near and fall down before you because you are just, and because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, now let's turn to the last reading, which is the Gospel of Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. 
When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and that the crowds that went ahead of him, uh, that I'm confused on this last line. Oh, the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You get an email that says that I've entitled this Debtor Than a Doornail to Sin. St. Paul says that not only are we no longer a slave to sin, but we are dead to sin. Dead to sin. Being dead to sin means being set free from sin, death to the separation of sin's power, not to the extension of sin. You and I will wrestle with sin in our lives, our entire lives. Verse 4b says in today's New Testament lesson, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That is, a new, fresh quality of life. A new spiritual life is implanted in us when we believe. That's what sanctification means. God is progressively separating the believer from sin and transforming our total life experience. It's an ongoing process. We are in the process of becoming more pure and more holy. Let's say that again. We are in the process of becoming more pure and more holy. The process of sanctification is never really over. There is always, there is always more and more and more of God for us. What a lovely thought. Raised from the dead in Jesus, we are raised from our old way of living. We have died with Christ. Verse 7 in the Romans reading, For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Christ, live with him. When St. Paul refers to being in Christ, he means that we are placed inside of Christ, inside of Jesus. We are united and identified with him. Consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. By the way, verse 10, where it says, The death he died, he died to sin once for all, 
but the life he lives, he lives to God. That verse takes care of any suggestion that Christianity has anything to do with reincarnation. Jesus died once for sin and was raised from the dead, raised from the dead, ascended to the Father, and doesn't need to live or die again. No reincarnation for Christians. Just in case you were wondering. Amen. We're to the Apostles' Creed, y'all. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's use section B today, please. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Finding my place. Here we go. This is the last day to use the proper seven collect. Let us pray. O Lord, you have made us, excuse me, O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reference for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today, let's pray, let's see, let's pray Collect number 18 on page 820. Collect 18 on page 820. They're under the heading of Prayers for Nat National Life. We could use some prayers for national life right now. Collect 18. They're on page 820. Almighty God, who has given us the good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that when that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither, 
out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail, all which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Colic 19. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness. Make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now let's turn back to page 100. Page 100. And let's say the third collect for mission. They're on the top of page 101. Page 101. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, it's on my heart to pray for our children. In fact, uh, How about you join me? Page 829, if you want to join me. Page 829, let's pray Collex 46 and 47. Page 829, College 46 and 47. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This Colic 47, Miss Judy and I just finished uh, teaching uh, sixth grade Christian education. Uh, we taught a total of six years. Uh, we have a new staffer coming.